One of the biggest struggles DTF producers have is colors, more specifically, reproducing accurate colors. Not anymore. With the NYX Color Scanner and Cadlink's Color Profiling add-on, you can get your DTF setup dialed in. The main benefit is obviously more accurate colors with the creation of an ICC profile. However, going through the print mode creation process, you will also be calibrating your overall ink amounts and finding the perfect amount of white underbase, usually resulting in less ink being used and lowering your production costs. In my experience, most users are using way more ink than they need to. And I'll explain more about that as we go through this process. This video is meant to be a tutorial you can follow along with as you're dialing in your own setup. So settle in and let's get started. I'm performing this on our Mongoose 2 printer. However, this tutorial will work with most DTF printers, though some dialogues or options may vary. You will need to purchase the NYX Color Profiling add-on for CADLINK from our website and a NYX Color Scanner. I will have links to both in the description. Make sure you set aside about two hours if this is your first time. Have your printer, oven, and heat press on as each step requires you to print, powder, cure, and press the test prints onto a shirt. Speaking of the shirt, you'll want to create separate print modes for light or dark colored shirts. A white shirt will require very little white underbase. A black shirt requires a significant amount. For this tutorial, we're using a black shirt. If there is another color shirt that you print regularly, you should create a print mode and color profile for that color shirt. Open Cadling Digital Factory and go to the Devices menu and select Manage Print Modes. Once in the Print Mode Manager, use the Show Print Modes 4 drop-down list to select which device you'll be setting up the ICC profile for. Use the Queues Available drop-down list to start with a queue. In our case, there's only one. Go to Spectrophotometers and select NYX Pro and Mini. The remaining options of ink set, media category, manufacturer, and resolution can be used to narrow down the options. The search field can be used to find specific print modes. With the NYX selected, click on the Settings button. It'll be the button with the three dots to the right. At the top, you can install the Windows NYX driver by clicking the Install button. The installer will begin, and you'll be asked if you want to allow this app to make changes to your device. Click Yes. The Installer dialog will lead you through the installation process. Once the driver is installed, you can proceed. You can set a time delay for the NYX, which is a delay between the scanning of each swatch in the reference chart you'll be printing out. The default is three seconds. You want to make sure there is time to move from swatch to swatch during the setup. Once you're done, click OK. Next, select a print mode from the list in the bottom half of the print mode dialog. It doesn't really matter which one you start with as we will be configuring every setting in the print mode. Click the full print mode creation icon at the top of the print mode manager dialog. If you do not see these buttons or they're grayed out, your NYX profiling add-on has not been installed properly. A dialog will appear to rename the print mode. You'll want to include the ink, film, and garment type you're setting this up for so you can quickly pull this print mode up anytime you're printing a black shirt. Leave the Enable Advanced Screening box checked and click OK. If your printer has a separate white channel, Digital Factory will know this and will ask if you would like to set the maximum white ink. Select Yes and click Next. The Maximum White Ink Wizard will open. Select the page size of your print bed, or in our case, there's just one available. You can select your own graphic to be used for the reference print, but I recommend selecting the recommended graphic as it covers most white use situations. Finally, set the size you would like to print the graphic. This will establish how many samples you'll have per page. I like to set my width to 2.75. This will give us nine graphics on the page. Click Next. In this next dialog, you'll set your printer options. Depending on your printer, you may have more or less options. You must set your printer options at this point as you will not be able to set them later on in the process. 
All future tests will be based on the resolutions and printer options you've set here. The default options can be used, or you can set them according to your unique situation. For the best overall results with our printer, we'll set the resolution to 720 by 1800, and we'll do six pass. Ink setup should be good with the defaults. However, some printers do have different ink orders. And if you notice when you print your test prints that the colors are totally out of whack, it's probably because your ink order has been set incorrectly. Bi-directional printing should be on, and speed, you wanna set to high speed. Click next. If your printer is capable of multiple dot sizes, you'll be shown a variable dot setup dialog. Here, you'll be able to select the size of the dots used as you print. As in the previous dialog, there's a recommended setting that will work for most printing situations, but you do have the option to select other combinations. We're gonna go with the recommended setting. Below is the color ink levels on white charts. The default is 80%, which works the majority of the time. This stipulates how much color ink will come out on the test print. If the resulting test sheet has too much ink, then this is where you reduce the amount of ink. Click next. This is the maximum white ink dialog. If your printer did not have variable dot capabilities, you were brought to this dialog after the printer options dialog. Similar to the other wizards in Digital Factory, this dialog is where you set the preferred white ink percentage after analyzing a printed chart. You'll print a chart with a range of white ink levels. You have a field to establish the minimum amount of ink followed by the maximum and the increment of change within the minimum and maximum range. In this step, our aim is to determine the optimal amount of white ink. This ensures the graphics colors are shielded from the shirt color, but without using excess ink. This strategy enables the graphic to be thinner and maintain a soft hand feel while keeping the colors vibrant. For the best test, Let's set our minimum amount to 50%, our maximum at 85%, and our increment of change to 5%. I have rarely seen a properly calibrated setup run their white ink higher than 80. Click on Print Max White Ink Chart. After a few moments, several jobs will appear in the queue, and the chart will be built in the preview on the right. It consists of three red tones at 20, 80, and 50% over one swatch of white. The white in each set increases by the increment set in the chart settings, starting at 50% and going up to 85%. Right click on one of the jobs in the queue and select print from the menu or click on the print icon found at the top. Some machines will start the printing process right away, but with most DTF printers, it will create the print file we will load into Print EXP or the Hosensoft software. Now, print the chart, powder it, cure it, and press it onto your test shirt. We're going to use this one shirt for all of the tests, so arrange them to optimize the shirt's real estate. What we're looking for is the transition point where the colors and the white start to fade. That indicates there's not enough ink to protect the graphic from the shirt color below. Again, we're looking to use as little white ink as necessary. After reviewing the results, put the percentage that gives you the best result into the field labeled enter preferred white ink percentage from the printed chart. We're gonna select 60. Click next. You're now at the dialog to set the amount of white under black. The percentage of white under black is relative to the maximum white ink level set in the previous dialog. Therefore, if your value here is set at 50%, this is 50% of the 60% preferred white ink value we've already set. There are three preset options, one for DTG and DTF printers, one for UV printers, and one to be set by the user. CADLink does not recommend the third option unless you have a deep understanding of the operation of your specific printer. And I do. The stretchiness and durability of the transfer are attributed to the white ink and adhesive powder. I've found that a minimum of 25 to 30% white ink is needed to achieve satisfactory stretch and durability. If, for example, I set our white ink level at 60%, the percentage for the white ink under the black should be adjusted to around 40 to 50%. Click Finish. The Rough Ink Limits dialog now opens. Since we went through the Set Maximum White Ink dialog, this area will be grayed out, 
since it was set earlier. We're going to start by selecting lower ink amount below the options window. Click print ink chart on the left. You will then print the chart from the queue as you had before. If flooding occurs, which is quite common and likely, select flooding use lower than A1 ink chart. Now click print lower ink chart that appears on the right. The chart will load as jobs into the queue and you'll print these charts. What you're looking for in this step is nice even color, no banding or flooding, and clean lines around the numbers with no bleeding. Before you powder, cure, and press it, have an idea of which value you like the best, and then confirm once you've pressed it. Now what we're looking for with this chart is smooth, even colors, less graininess, nice clean sharp lines. See how grainy that stuff is and not vibrant. I'm liking 85 the best. Yeah, so the number's right there, but we're gonna powder and cure it and press it just to make sure. Once you have your preferred value, select it from the dropdown on the right. The farthest right dropdown list, which is currently defaulted to small, medium, and large dots, lets you select which dots to use for the print job. This option is only available on two-bit printers, which have variable dot size capability. If the ink you're using has a thicker viscosity, you can use either one size of dots or a combination of dots, such as small and medium. This way you reduce the amount of ink hitting the media, avoiding flooding, bleeding, or banding. We suggest sticking with the default of small, medium, and large for this particular step. Click next. This is the fine ink limits dialog. You have an opportunity to adjust the fine ink limits if you are close to what you need, but can afford to tweak your settings a small amount. The small chart on the right will show, for information purposes only, the distribution of the dot size is being used. This varies from machine to machine. The final step in the ink limiting process is to print out one more set of swatches. But before you do that, CadLink recommends setting your preferred max ink level between 280 and 360. In my experience, 280 is way too low. I like to set my max ink at 320 or 340. Now go ahead and click print ink chart on the left and print from the queue. This will print charts from A1 to A7 if you've selected A1 in the previous dialog, or in my case, 73 to 85 because I had flooding. Here you can look for any banding, coalescence, bleeding, and see if the colors still look reasonable. The top part of the ink chart should have rich and uniform ink with good saturation. The bottom part of the ink chart with the numbers should be clear with little to no bleed. This one can technically be assessed without pressing, but I like to keep things consistent. Still digging 85. Once I've decided on my preferred value, I'll put it in and click next. We are now at the final ink test. Print the job from the queue as previously done throughout this demonstration. The colors likely won't be accurate. That will be dealt with shortly. We're simply looking for good, even ink coverage that is not flooding, bleeding, banding, or coalescing. Many times I've done this and the black gradient hasn't shown up on the print, but it did not adversely affect my final results. If there are any issues, select print is bad and go back and adjust some of the settings. If you notice flooding is happening, maybe reduce the overall max ink level. Select print is good and click next you're taken to the measurements chart calibration dialog. From here, you'll print the swatch chart for scanning. Click print chart. The chart will show up as a job in the queue. You can then print the chart, powder it, cure it, and press it on the t-shirt. You can go back to the full print mode creation wizard and in the measuring charts calibration dialog, start scanning the swatches. Position the shirt within reach of the computer connected to the NYX device. When you're ready to start scanning, click the start button found in the chart measurement area. You should have a reasonable amount of time to position the NYX sensor on each swatch. The computer will beep after each scan of the swatch, prompting you to move to the next swatch. If you miss positioning the NYX sensor on the following swatch in the allotted time and miss the scan, you'll have to restart the process starting at the very first swatch. You wanna scan starting at A1 and then B1, C1, D1, 
and so forth till you decay. And then you start with A2, B2, C2, and so on. Once the scanning is complete, Click next and you'll now be in the calibration curves dialog. The values in this dialog will be set according to the information that has been gathered through the scanning process. You can't tweak the calibration values as they are for information only. CADLink normally recommends using the color logic setting found in the calibrations curves creation dropdown list at the top. Click next. This is where you will measure the ICC charts. Click print charts as you have before. Print it powder it, cure it, and press it on the test shirt. Now use the NYX sensor to measure each color swatch. Use the same process you used when scanning the chart for calibration. Make sure no one bothers you while you're doing this. Like before, if you miss one of the scans, you will have to start over from the beginning. When you complete the scanning, click Next. This brings you to the Profiling dialog. Go to the Profile Calculation Settings dropdown at the top and choose the type of printing process you'll be using. In our case, we're using DTF or Direct-to-Film. You can tweak the settings for the desired maximum and minimum ink. If you find there is too much ink in your output, you can reduce the total max ink coming from your color ink to avoid bleeding and flooding. The minimum, make sure there is a limit to the amount of ink restriction to ensure a level of quality to your prints. The safe black is controlled by preset values in Digital Factory to give you the best results. It's best to have this selected for most cases. In custom black, you can use the slider to set the GCR or gray component replacement amount. This is how the grays are handled in the image. The initial start of the gradient will be created using the combinations of other inks mixing to create the gray. Then, depending on the setting, the substitution of black for the gray component begins. The black start sets when the actual black ink starts to be used in a gray gradient. The black width sets how far into the gradient the black is used as a replacement. The black point calculation and gamut is created from the previous scanning done by the NYX sensor. Click Next. The progress bar will appear if the profile needs to be rebuilt based on your settings. In the next dialog, you set the default profile you would like to use. We recommend using the profile sRGB plus ISO coded, which is closest to industry standard for color matching. The CADLINK wide profile will give you brighter colors, but will be less accurate. Each profile set at the top will then apply input profiles for vector and image input profiles for RGB, LAB, and CMYK values. Based on this information, the output profile is created. Well-designed image artwork will have profiles which Digital Factory will use instead of what is set here. This way, the image will output to the original specifications of the designer. It's recommended to have Apply ICC to Grayscale selected. If selected, CMYK will be used to create grayscales. If this is not selected, grayscale will print with just black without using cyan, magenta, or yellow, and will not look dark enough in most cases. Spot color matching is an internal matching system used to emulate industry spot colors. Click Next. In this dialog, you'll be able to label your profile for different categories. You can select available options in the dropdown, or you can type in your own option. For ink set, I'll enter DTF Superstore, Super CMYK, and Max White. For category, I'll put black or dark garment. For media, I'll put in our DTF Superstore V2 Hot Peel. And for media description, I'll put in Bella in Canvas 100 Cotton. Click Next. The final dialog is a summary and contains information on the location of the print mode and profile settings, as well as the spectrophotometer that was used. Click Finish. 
After the completion of the profile, they will become an active print mode and can be accessed from the print mode drop-down list on the job tab. That's it. You've calibrated your printer, ink, and film for accurate results on a black shirt. Do this process again for a white shirt, as the white ink levels will be significantly reduced and any other shirt color you print on a regular basis. You now have the confidence your results will be consistent. Be careful though, as some customers' computer screen colors may be off. We still suggest printing a color swatch shirt so your customers could pick specific colors if the results aren't what they were expecting. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more expert DTF content.